we know that the Bible was not written in our language. So for those that cannot speak Greek and Hebrew, we rely on translators, but not all translations are the same. Give us a bit of a breakdown about what different types of translations we have and what are the most reliable. Yeah, so that's a huge uh, topic of translation and the, and the, um, the science and the, the theory of translation. Uh, but, you know, we understand that, you know, when you have a, another language, you're trying to find the most accurate translation of, of what was actually said. That's in any situation. So, the, but there really are two schools of thought when it comes to Bible translation. Some translations will go for a more essentially literal translation. So those will be like the, the, the King James, the New King James, the New American Standard. Um, the English Standard Version, uh, even the, the Christian Standard Bible, which is a newer one, those translations will really try to get after what's actually on the page, uh, literally. And you would say, well, well, yeah, that makes sense. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, the challenge is that with a language like Greek or even Hebrew, sometimes the word order is different, and sometimes the grammar is weird. And so uh, I read the New American Standard. It's, I think it's the most essentially literal translation, but sometimes the verses are clunky. And the grammar is awkward. Um, and so when you go to sit down and read it as a book, as a document, it, it, you stumble over it sometimes because of the, the, the rigidity in translation. And so another school of thought will say, well, let, let's, let's not go verse for verse here, or word for word. Let's kind of go thought for thought. Let's, let's kind of open it up a little bit. And they'll take some leaps and really try to say, okay, what is this verse really trying to say? And they'll smooth out some of the grammar. They'll take some interpretive leaps. Uh, the new uh, international version, the NIV does that. Um, the new living translation, NLT does that. They'll try to sort of smooth that out. And, and the translators begin to make some decisions about what the, the verses mean and sort of expand that out. Those can be really helpful uh, because it does give you a sort of a broader view, smoother when you read it. But sometimes if you if the translators are, are thinking differently about a verse than, than maybe the rest of the church is thinking about, it, it, they might make some mistakes. They can bring in some narrative, which is a little bit dangerous. I think overall, you have to understand that translations, I think of them as tools in a tool belt. Each translation, each philosophy will do something different. You just have to know what you have. I think for personal Bible study, for us, for exegesis and study, for sermons, I use as little of a translation as I possibly can. And then I do the work of interpreting and even rendering some phrases but if I'm just, you know, trying to study and sort of get a, a better sense, a broader sense, I think using a, a more um, thought for thought translation can be helpful. I think it can can provide a little bit of insight as long as you know that that's what that actually is. So yeah. use them like tools in a tool belt. That's what I say. You stopped at thought for thought. I was hoping to hear your uh, thoughts on paraphrase in the message. Tell us about that now. Do I have to? Do I have to? So uh, there are translations that are, they're really not translations. They're, they're, they're essentially commentary. Uh, the most famous is The Message by Eugene Peterson. Uh, it's really not a translation. It's, it's his free, free thinking interpretation of a lot of the verses. Um, I, I, think, I think maybe on a devotional level, it could be helpful, um, but, but it's, it's not the word of God. And I think we have to know that. Uh, I don't fault him for doing that. I think that there's, you know, Christians have been interpreting and commenting on the Bible for, for centuries. But I think to say this is the word of God when it sounds so very different than what is actually written, I think that's a little bit dangerous sometimes or maybe just not helpful. Um, but, you know, I think if a Christian wants to read that and understands what they're reading, there could be value there. But I really I lean the other side. I really want to get as close to the text as possible to the original Greek and Hebrew. Um, I really want to know what, what did God inspire? That, that's what's going to be helpful and instructive. And uh, that's really the revelation of God right there. So, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't read the message very often. <laughs> yeah. 